Hey, it's PMR. It's a big day. It's November 7th. Uh, the presser is still going on right now. As soon as they finished talking about the 893, I left because I already know about the 3028, and so do you from watching my videos, hopefully. I wanted to, I made some notes uh, during the conference uh, uh, about the camera, and I wanted to separate these notes into two categories. First, I'm going to address still photography and the advantages of the new A93 for that. And then the second one will be um, about video advantages. And then the last one will be the price and the pain points, uh, things that they could have maybe done better um, or things that I think could have been improved or whatever. So first we're gonna talk about stills. Um, I wanna make this very clear most of the improvements, most of the advantages and the big crazy science fiction added points to this camera are sensor related. People really need to understand when you're buying cameras these days, you're really not buying a set of features in a pro camera, a prosumer camera, an amateur camera. You're buying a sensor and the quicker people realize this, the better choices they're going to make in terms of buying. So the 24 mega, 24.6 megapixel stack global shutter, uh, that's a mouthful. It's huge. This is a huge thing. Global shutter is something that we've dreamed about for a long time, especially somebody that uses flash a lot. Um, but basically what this means is that instead of reading like a TV screen, top to bottom really fast, like the A1 and the A92, uh, global shutter reads everything at once in one shot so the camera can go much, much faster, faster than ever before. Uh, and so there are new shutter speeds available. Uh, one eighty thousandth of a second is possible, but not with autofocus. But you can go up to one sixteen thousandth of a second with full autofocus on this new global shutter. Now, this gives slight advantage to the A92 and the A1 because they can go to thirty two thousandth of a second with full autofocus but not with global shutter. The next thing that's huge is there's no banding with this camera. It's never gonna see banding um, because it's a global shutter. Global shutter erases all anti-flicker issues. It just all goes away. So if you're shooting on football fields with like, weird funky color and you got a blue frame and a yellow frame and a red frame, or if you shoot in, in places like in higher education where there are certain rooms you have to shoot in, where the lights are funky and you get these the banding across, all that's out the window. This is like banding free, flicker free photography for the very first time. It's amazing. Flash, I mentioned before, uh, the, the Alpha One was a huge advance in terms of flash sync. No one has even reached that uh, benchmark yet of one four hundred hundred of a second with real strobes, regular strobes, not speed lights. Um, the global shutter just tosses that completely out the window and now you're going to be able to use a flash at any shutter speed you want, anywhere you want. Uh, HSS is now a, a past thing that we don't even need anymore. Uh, High-speed sync has, has been something that all of us that shoot portraits outdoors have been using for years. I can remember before HSS existed, it was such a pain because that's why we had to use Hasselblads to get one more shutter speed above 250 to get to 500 of a second with a leaf shutter. Now all that's toast, it's all gone. So you can use a flash, any flash you want to, any, at, from any era you want to, uh, and you're gonna get uh, perfect flash synchronization. There's no, one, there's no such thing as synchronization anymore. Global shutter just erases all that. The 120 frames per second with 14-bit raw is incredible. So we used to have the 30 frame per second was the highest the Alpha 1 could achieve and, and prior to that the A92 could go 20 frames per second. Now we're at 120 frames per second with 14 bit RAW. That's nuts. So it's really too fast. I mean I shoot the Alpha 1 all the time at 20 frames a second for certain sports. Now certain sports I'm at 30. But the fact that we'll be able to choose what frame rate we want just like really, really just like the movies, exactly like the movies, um, you're going to be able to go to, you know, tennis and do, tennis is a, is, a, is a sport that I would single frame all the time because it was the best way to get the moment. That's no longer going to be the case. At 120 frames, it's going to smoke my own timing 
of when to hit that button. I mean, it's just, it's pretty crazy. The pre-capture, one second pre-capture is straight out of George Jetsonville. I mean, it's just, you know, basically you're gonna have to hang on the, the new C5 button on the front of the camera and then boom, when you hit that, it just, it just boggles the mind. This pre-capture thing, Sony has really figured out how to actually look into the future one second. Um, so that's amazing. But remember, you gotta be in focus. Otherwise you're gonna get a second worth of all these pictures that are gonna be out of focus. So you really still have to be on your game all the time. It's not like some instant fix it feature that's gonna make everything better. Um, I mean, it'll make some things better, but the fact that there are 759 autofocus points, remember I said, these are all sensor related. Every single thing I'm talking about is sensor related improvements. Um, the five different now AF point sizes. This is big. We, we've we only had small, medium, large. Now we're gonna have like an extra tiny and then a huge one too. So there's gonna be five different ways to choose your autofocus point size. So that's a big deal. Now, those are the, that's the end of the sensor-related improvements. When I got serious about creating my YouTube studio, I knew I needed a solution for LED lighting. Westcott's L60Bs are fantastic and are the perfect blend of power, control, and price point. Now we're gonna talk about the image processor. So there are two different processors in this camera, just like the A7R5. Um, and in this, you're gonna be able to change your shutter lag. Your shutter lag time is gonna be changeable, which is killer. I mean, that's awesome. You're gonna be 120 frame per second blackout free. Actually, technically that would be in the uh, sensor related improvements, sorry. Uh, real time AI, so like your autofocus is gonna have a whole new added feature of real time autofocus with AIs helping you. Uh, it's gonna basically be better than the tracking that we now have in the Alpha One. The added button on the front of the camera, this uh, speed boost button, um, this is also going to be, this is related to both sensor and uh, processor, so that's a big deal. The last group of, of things that are improved on this camera, and I haven't seen one yet, I haven't tried one, I haven't shot one, I will do that as soon as I possibly can, um, but they've, they've been listening to us, sports photographers especially, we've been asking for a larger grip, a bigger thing to grab. Um, they did not show the, the grip, unfortunately, in the presser, they only showed the camera but you could see uh, how much longer it was than the uh, A1, which is great. And the A1 was a huge improvement over the A9 too. So I think they're, they're headed the right direction uh, in terms of making everything big. I think the grip will be a larger grip with all that you know larger. It's still gonna have the same two batteries. Some of us were hoping there would be a one big battery. I don't care, I, the, the, the two batteries are fine with me. The Z batteries are wonderful, I love those things. Also, uh, regarding batteries, instead of the way it works right now with uh, the grips currently, you have to drain one before it goes to two. Now it's gonna drain from both batteries at the same time, and this is gonna give us 15% more capacity. So the battery's gonna last longer, I don't know how many hundreds of frames that is, but it's a lot. So that's a big thing. So I wish the grip was available to kind of see, uh, but hopefully later today we'll be able to see it online, uh, pictures online or whatever. Now, that's it for stills. Let's go into video. Um, so again, everything that's an improvement in video relates to the sensor, everything. Uh, there's no exception here. So um, no rolling shutter, period. There's no rolling shutter in this camera whatsoever. There's no distortion. None. So no matter what frame rate you choose, even up to 120 frames a second in all eye, you're gonna have no distortion. So for any kind of filmmaking where there's action being, being captured, this camera is gonna be the best way to do that. It's full frame, I mean, it takes all the Sony glass. I mean, get out of town, that's amazing. Uh, also, it's 6K capture. So it's oversampling and then pumping it down to 4K 60P. So that's a big deal. Uh, you're gonna be able to do 4K, full 4K, 120 frames per second with no cropping on the sensor. So you're gonna get a true full frame image at 120 frames per second with zero distortion, with no band, like nothing. So this is a big deal. No banding, no flicker, all that's out the window. So 
This is gonna be the most pure way to shoot video there ever has been before this. The four axis LCD, I'm not a huge fan of it, but vloggers will love it. The only problem I have with that four axis LCD is that it's really hard when you have it open and you're looking down with a wide lens to keep your horizon straight. Now maybe that's just me, but I'm always listening to port or starboard. But anyway, you'll figure it out. The EVF in this camera is the best they've ever made. It's 9.44 million dot. So this is a beautiful, beautiful in, uh, EVF. And those of you that are shooting this, that are shoot video all the time, you really gotta start looking in that thing. You're always so used to using external monitors and all that, nothing is gonna look as good or allow you to judge color, sharpness, and exposure better than that EVF. 9.4 mil dot is insane. So really, I invite you to kind of start looking in that little, little tiny window. So that's it. The price is uh, $6,000, $59.99. It's a lot, except for when you consider the global shutter. Um, that is astounding. That is just unbelievable. You have to read through the line, between the lines here. This camera does not have a mechanical shutter. That's obvious. They didn't really come out and say it. They said there's no need for it, but that means it's not there. And there is no need for a mechanical shutter whatsoever with a global shutter. So that's cool. Pain points, the last bit. Pain points, I think the C5 button is a great idea, but I think that it's gonna prove itself to not be realistic. Um, you're not gonna be able to find that button that you cannot see from where you're shooting, right? So this is, this camp, this is like you're never gonna see it when you're taking pictures. It's gonna be in front of you and um, that thing is gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard to get muscle memory for that. What they should have done instead is made a two position shutter release. We already have it now. We have, we wake the camera up and then we fire, but there could have been a third one that was deep where you go deep and then you hit it and then you get your speed boost. That would have been the best way to go in my opinion. Now it would have made, been difficult and hard to make that new shutter release button, but that is, I think that was a, that's a pain point for me. Otherwise this thing is just insane. I mean, it's just off the chain. Uh, if you can live with 24 megapixels, this camera is revolutionary in a way that even the A9 can't even approach. So this is this is like, this is the same level of advancement that the A9 brought to all the DSLRs that existed. Having a global shutter is astounding. It is absolutely breathtaking. Uh, it's a mic drop moment for sure for Sony today. The last pain point that I have is they very, kind of quickly read through and said that there's gonna be a firmware update for the Alpha One in the spring of 2024. Oh my God, please give it to us sooner than that. Um, those of us that are gonna to continue to use A1s, which I will, am I gonna get this camera? Yeah, you bet. But I'm still gonna use the A1s for the 50 megapixel. So I wish that had been, I wish that had been today. I really do. But. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that the time it takes for them to make the new sh uh, firmware update for the Alpha One will be worth it. And the same thing for the A7S III. Um, people have been waiting for a long time for that. All the video shooters have been waiting for a, a major update to the A7S III. Hopefully that will come sooner than spring of 24. Thanks so much for watching. This is a pre-review. Uh, once I get the camera in my hands, I will of course do a more complete review and find all the stuff that Sony didn't tell us today in the press around alphauniverse.com. Thanks so much for watching.